Hello, I'm Darrell Weilberg, and welcome to my channel. I am a Jehovah's Witness in good standing, or if you prefer, I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses in good standing. Either uh, sentence is correct. Uh, this video, uh, being a Jehovah's Witness in good standing, I have to inform you, is not approved by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania or New York. It's not approved by the eight faithful members of the governing body. Those poor Bethelites are all on lockdown now due to this COVID thing. And my heart goes out to them. And they're always in my prayers. I love each and every one of them. And this video is not approved by any local body of elders. I don't work for the elders, I don't work for the governing body, and I don't work for the One Star Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania. I work for Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is look up in the Bible, Matthew 23, 10. My leader is one, Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to discuss uh, Jane, uh, plain Jane's case again. Uh, uh, there's, uh, I want to dissect the corresponding scriptures here I'm about to lay out to you and see if they apply to this matter at hand with Plain Jane and the one elder from the DEF congregation as well as the entire six body of elders at Jane's ABC congregation. Now please turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles and let's consider Matthew chapter 18 uh, and we're going to uh, take verses 15 through 17. That's Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 through 17. I'm going to read from the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, which is the most accurate Bible in print today. But you can use any Bible you want. They all basically say the same thing, and they're all the Word of God. Uh, verse 15. Moreover, if your brother commits a sin, go and reveal his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. If he does not listen to you, take along with you one or two more, so that on the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter may be established. If he does not listen to them, uh, you speak to the congregation or the body of elders. If he does not listen even to the congregation or the body of elders, let him be to you just as a man of the nations, as a tax collector. This is the disfellowshipping scripture, one of them. And that's right. If you commit a gross sin and, and your sin is laid before you and you don't listen to anybody, including the person that saw you do the sin and, and another one he takes along and, and eventually to the body of elders and you still don't repent for your sin and take responsibility, you are disfellowshipped. And the reason why I bring this out today, these uh, three scriptures, 15, 16, and 17 of uh, Matthew 18, is that uh, the seven elders involved here stand in a position of being disfellowshipped before Jehovah God. Yeah, all seven of them. The entire body of elders of APC congregation and at least one elder of the DEF congregation. So let's dissect this and see where it takes us. Moreover, if your brother commits a sin, go and reveal his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, wow, you have gained your brother. Now, Jane made sure that she did this to all seven elders involved in this matter. Brother Esteban M. was the first brother who committed a sin. Yeah, you see, Esteban, either him or his wife, or both of them, gave bogus information to Martha, a Bible study of his wife. As if that was not enough, then Esteban becomes a busybody into matters that did not involve him, and he misinterprets the governing body on the subject of using chat rooms. Esteban believes the governing body orders the dear ones not to visit chat rooms. No such order exists. 
except in the imaginations of Esteban and uh, of those like Esteban. And there are many out there. Esteban uh, then engages Martha, the study of his wife, to pull off the okie doke on Jane and invite her to the Zoom meeting. You see, this way Esteban can get the congregation and the Kobe of Jane's and report his misconceptions regarding chat rooms to a couple of elders from Jane's congregation. He sends Jane an email and tells her in order for him to provide the Zoom meeting and password, she will have to tell him the congregation she attends and the Kobe of that congregation. Jane obliges, unfortunately. Uh, Jane then tells me. So I tell Jane immediately that this guy's up to no good. I tell Jane to email Esteban back and ask him if the meetings are open to the public. He responds, they are. So this clown Esteban answers her email and tells her yes, but he has to vet all the att that attend the meeting. Now keep in mind now that there are at least one host and three co-hosts that can kick any unruly individual out of any Zoom meeting. Now neither Jane's ABC congregation nor my congregation vets attendees. Uh, the publishers can just give out anyone the, the meeting number and the password to attend. If you have a Bible student or somebody that may be from another congregation, you can just give them the, they don't have to be vetted. And that is exactly uh, what he did. So Jane finally wrote him another email and told him, you know what, forget sending her the information on their DEF congregations and meeting. She's not going to be attending even though she was invited by Martha. Now one has to wonder right away here, why Martha didn't just give Jane the number and the password to this DEF Zoom meeting, and Martha set up Jane. She set her right up to be harassed by Esteban, and he did a good job, or at least so far. I told Jane to send me all the emails, and I noticed when I looked at his emails that Esteban was disingenuous and he was dishonest and he never addressed Jane's sister. All Jehovah's meetings are open to the public unless they occur in countries, of course, where the work is being. I also provided research on Martha and that it was okay that Martha becomes a non-baptized publisher even though she was living with her boyfriend of 22 years and they weren't married. And more importantly, that Esteban or any elder could actually perform the marriage of Martha and her boyfriend at the Kingdom Hall. Yeah, even though they weren't baptized, dedicated Jehovah's Witnesses, they could be married at the Kingdom Hall and by an elder. Now, Martha had informed Jane that she and her boyfriend wanted to get married, but the COVID-19 came about. So there are two sins right there that Esteban commits. One, either he or his wife or both gave bogus and possibly stumbling information to Martha, contrary to these scriptures. And let's turn in our Bibles and let's look at the scriptures uh, in the book of Luke. Um, we're going to go to chapter 17 and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. That's Luke 17, 1 through 4. And then he said to his disciples, it is unavoidable. Now this is Jesus. It is unavoidable that causes for stumbling should occur, should come about. Nevertheless, woe to the one through whom they come. It would be more advantageous for him if a millstone was hung from his neck and he was thrown into the sea than for him to stumble one of these little ones. Now, just, just stop right there for a moment. He's talking about the sheep of Jehovah. Jesus died for those sheep. He doesn't want them stumbled and he doesn't want them abused by elders. And verse 3. Pay attention to yourselves. I like this part. If your brother commits a sin, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. See, here's the point. The brother has to repent and he has to ask for your forgiveness before you even have to forgive him. You don't have to forgive anybody that doesn't repent to you, that sins against you, and doesn't uh, apologize. Sincerely. And then you have to forgive him if he does. Now, even if he sins seven times a day against you and he comes back to you and 
seven times saying, I repent. You must forgive him if he is sincere. Now, now, we have no way of knowing if Esteban went back to Martha and corrected his error, or his wife went back to Martha and corrected their error. We don't know. We do know uh, that he never came to repent to Jane or ask her forgiveness, nor did he come to me and repent and ask for my forgiveness for calling me an apostate or labeling me an apostate. And the second reason, uh, he didn't mind his own business. Now, 1 Thessalonians 4.11, uh, Paul cautions the Thessalonians and us too to mind our own business. And 1 Peter took, took it a step further in 1 Peter 4.15 and he told us don't become a busybody. He labels, he associates busybody with murderers and thieves. Esteban interfered with Jane and her congregation upon information and belief. Esteban also slandered both Jane and me by telling Martha and the two clowns from Jane's congregation that we were apostates. Or at least that I was an apostate. Proverbs 20:19. Did Esteban become a Judas Iscariot or the devil? Yeah. John 6, 70 and 71. And notice the footnote. A slanderer is devil. That's what devil means, slander. So uh, Esteban did if he told Jane's elders that I was an apostate. Esteban finds at least two clowns at Jane's congregation as misguided as he is on what the governing body provided over the last 20 years regarding the use of chat rooms. And of course, what the governing body provided over the last 60 years over uh, people cohabitating, how they can become unbaptized publishers even though they cohabit. <laughs> so now uh, he sends these two clowns, as Esteban, he sends these two clowns from the ABC congregation, Jane's congregation, a copy of the email I sent him and complained about my content and tone. Now just how someone can determine tone of an email is way beyond me. Now Esteban tries to convince everyone uh, to be uh, you know, of Jane's congregation and probably his congregation and Martha and his wife. He tries to get everybody uh, to uh, be against one of Jehovah's anointed and to side with him, Esteban, and these two other clowns of Jane's congregation. And the other four elders fell for it. The other four body of elders in Jane's congregation. See, I embarrassed Esteban by doing the research that that clown should have done. Later, I sent Esteban, Pablo S., and Pablo A., as well as the Kobe of the ABC congregation, the branch, and the circuit overseer, copies of the excerpts over the last 20 years from the governing body on chat rooms, and asked any of them to show me where the direct order from the governing body is not to, ch to use chat rooms. I wonder where, that is, where does that exist? Of course, I'm still waiting for that reply, because there is none. Meanwhile, uh, Pablo S., taking the lead, and Pablo A., decide they are going to counsel Jane on the email I sent. And they, too, are dishonest. They really want to counsel Jane on the use of the chat rooms. <laughs> and she only uses one chat room. We don't go hopping uh, to all different chat rooms. We have a chat room where we have full administrative control, and that's the chat room we stay in. It's the Pell Talk chat room entitled, Is Jehovah the True God? Everybody's welcome. It's open to the public. Just like the site is, jw.org. It's open to the public. But we're not going off in different places and looking for people. No, see, they come to us. Now, if there is no direct order from the governing body not to use chat rooms, uh, these elders are merely going, going to attempt to force their opinions on Jane. Romans 14.1. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. They opine Jane should not use chat rooms. Jane asked me to intervene at this point. So I'm telling her what to say. She tells Pablo S. that I wrote S. about the emails and that there is no discussion, discussing of the use of chat rooms beyond being told by the governing body to be cautious. Pablo S. keeps insisting politely at first that Jane that they want to talk to Jane. They want to meet with Jane. 
want to counsel Jane. Jane keeps informing Pablo S. that she's not interested in discussing the matter further with him. And then he tells her, I am not a brother and that I am an apostate. He slanders me, gossips about me. Now this clown puts that down in writing. That's how stupid they are during his text message. Uh, Jane then calls Pablo as the apostate and tells him under no circumstance would she ever meet with him. She, even today, she removes herself when either Elder Pablo, Pablo S. or Pablo A. gives parts during the meetings. She has requested the Kobe to remove her from the Pablo S. service group. Along comes the Holy Spirit and they appoint another brother as an elder. Hopefully Jane will be assigned to that brother's group. They just did that last week. Now, uh, finally, Pablo S. now makes it a demand. He demands Jane meets with them, and Jane tells him, basically, to go fly a kite, so to speak. She then gets an, ex an SMS text message from this Pablo A., wherein he informs Jane that because she refused a, now get this, a loving shepherding call, that they are removing all her privileges and booting her out of the theocratic ministry school. Basically, these two clowns disfellowship Jane because she wouldn't meet with them on matters that she had nothing to do with. Jane emphatically told them time after time she had nothing to do with the email I wrote and that the governing body issued no direct order not to use chat rooms. Yep, just the two of these clowns disfellowship Jane. Basically, what do they do to disfellowship her? When they disfellowship someone, they remove all their privileges and boot them out of the theocratic ministry school. They don't boot them out of the kingdom all. And then, of course, they announced that so-and-so is no longer a Jehovah's Witness. Now, they didn't even get that far with Jane. Now, Jane laid the sins against all seven elders before them alone, just between her and them, by email and SMS text messages. And not one apologized or repented. Not one of these elders listened. Now, uh, verse 16 of Matthew 18 says this, but if he does not listen, take along with you one or two more, so that on the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter may be established. Now, this is how you establish the matter, the truth of the matter, by taking along somebody else. Jane took me along. But Jane didn't just take me along. Jane asked me to file an appeal for her with the branch and the circuit overseer. I failed the appeal, and as soon as the ABC body of elders got the copy of that, their copy of the appeal, they reversed their evil sentence upon Jane. They reinstated her privileges, all but one privilege, that is, and they reassigned her to the theocratic ministry school. All is well and good, yes? No. I knew the body of elders was not going to take this matter lying down. I see their lords. Oh, yeah. Hey, don't mess with the body of elders. In their minds, one who claims to be of Jehovah's anointed had just made a fool of them. Uh, like the Israelites of old, they stoned the messenger. It was Jehovah's Holy Spirit that made fools out of the seven elders because they were acting like lords and severely abused Jane. So here Jane takes along the events and provides the SMS text messages and emails written by these clowns in their own handwriting, so to speak, and sends them to the branch and the circuit overseer by way of the appeal. Now, her brothers did not listen to her, so she took along her established witnesses, the messages and the emails to the matters and presented them to the branch and the circuit overseer. Now the circuit overseer schedule just happens to visit on the week that they get the appeal. The Holy Spirit always arranges things just so. If we are patient and wait on Jehovah, I timed the appeal to reach by post to both the branch and the circuit overseer upon his visit. I did not trust the elders to provide copies. I instructed Jane to put in for auxiliary pioneer for the month of February, knowing the body of elders would seek revenge on her for going by the arrangement of Jehovah. Sure enough, the body wrote Jane again by SMS and informed her that they were denying her application to AP, auxiliary pioneer, for February because she accused several elders of miscreant activity. 
I do not see what her accusations against the body of elders have to do with her service to Jehovah. There is no reason to deny her application for auxiliary pioneer, especially in light of the submitted proof of her accusations. These columns have positive proof that one elder slandered and gossiped about me, and probably Jane, maybe two elders, that one elder didn't mind his own business, became a busybody. He gave a student false information, and two elders DFing poor uh, Martha as well as all six body of elders with the ABC congregation, denying Jane's application to be an AP exemplary pioneer for February because she followed Jehovah's arrangements. That's right, Jane followed Jehovah's arrangements. She didn't take her argument to the congregation. She didn't take it to the folks there, the publishers. She didn't try to get the publishers to side against the elders, never mentioned it to any of them. She took it to the branch. So now the matter is well established. The SMS text message proves that they are disciplining Jane for following the arrangement listed in Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Jane laid each sin committed against her and me before each individual elder and the body of elders. They did not listen. So I took the witnesses, the SMS text messages and emails, and I sent them with an appeal on Jane's behalf to the branch and the circuit overseer, the congregation, so to speak. 17, verse 17. If he still does not listen to them, speak to the congregation. That's what she did. If he does not listen to the, even to the congregation, let him be to you as a man of the nations and as a tax collector. In other words, he stands this fellowship. Now, Jehovah knows that all this went down. Unfortunately, every single elder, all seven elders, stand in a position to Jehovah as being disfellowship. Right now, today, they are all disfellowship. They did not listen to Jane when she laid her sins before them individually. They did not listen to when she appealed their evil persecution against Jane, also laying their sins before them, and they did not listen to the branch of circuit overseer to repent and seek our forgiveness. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. If these elders maintain their current regimen, they will be violently destroyed during the Great Tribulation or at Armageddon, if they make it that far. In all honesty, these elders will probably not even make it through the Great Tribulation. They have no humility. None. Jane has more humility in her little finger than they have in their whole bodies. All seven of them. Collectively. They believe the scriptures do not apply to them. I'm boss. They believe they are more important than the sheep of Jehovah. Oh, do they have a rude awakening coming. Jesus didn't die for those sheep so these elders could abuse them. Now, one of the most important scriptures all of these elders violated was that Paul counseled them through divine wisdom from Jehovah that they must always make sure of all things. They didn't make sure of all things. They didn't make sure of anything. Yeah. This event is what happens when one fails to adhere to the scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. Please turn with me there in your Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. And there it reads, Always be rejoicing. Uh, pray constantly. Give thanks for everything. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the fire of the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Make sure of all things. Hold fast to what is fine. Abstain from every form of wickedness. These seven, seven elders did not make sure of all things. And instead of admitting they failed, they are still attempting to put out the spirit of plain Jane. I was hoping to save their lives with my appeal and could still save their lives and hope that they, uh, that they listen to this. Now, they won't watch this video because they think that the slave forbids them to watch this video and some of them still think I'm an apostate. So they won't listen to this appeal. And the cover letter, they won't listen to that. And I sent them copies of that. And, uh, you know, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna listen to anything because they think they're above scripture and they're not gonna answer to one of the anointed 
they're going to just go about their business. We tell you, you don't tell us. If they do not apologize to Jane and me and repent, they will most likely not survive the Great Tribulation, and they will certainly not survive Armageddon. These seven elders are not humble, are not humble. There's no humility in them. And nobody can serve the true God in any capacity if they are not humble. They, they are not humble enough to sincerely voice those three little words that can save each of their lives. I am sorry. Now let's see if any of them can find the humility to spare their lives after this video. Or if they continue believing in that double standard. Do what we tell you. When we tell you. Don't do what we do. Just do what we tell you to do. They have had uh, a month to stop their persecution and attempt to put out the fire of the Spirit in Jane. They will never put out that fire of Spirit except in their own miserable lives they now lead thinking they can lord it over the flock of Jehovah. Now when Jesus arrives to separate the sheep from the goats, these seven men will not be able to claim, gee, Jesus, nobody told, nobody told us. Remember at Matthew 7, 13, and this is the final conclusion. I'm just going to elaborate on the scripture. I'm not going to read it. Where Jesus talks about the narrow gate because broad is the gate and spacious that road that leads off into destruction. Jesus was talking to his followers. He was talking to these seven elders. They didn't listen to him then. They didn't listen to any of the apostles, Peter or Paul, who warned them of these things. Not to be busy bodies, not to false testify against their brothers. And they falsely testified against me. Look, if I was an apostate, I would be disfellowshipped. Uh, being an apostate is, dis is a disfellowshipping offense. I'm not an apostate. I don't agree a lot, but I don't teach what I disagree with. I don't step in front of the faithful slave. But sometimes I voice my opinions. I don't like the Jonah video. Jonah doesn't have no sister. <laughs> I don't like what they say about Jesus when he was uh, there on the shore and the brothers were out fishing in a small boat. Jesus didn't ask those brothers if they were fishing to, for commercial. Hey, did you make any money? Did you catch any fish to sell? No, he said, did you catch anything to eat? They were out there fishing to eat. They were not there fishing to sell. And when Peter said, when Jesus said, feed my lambs, he was talking about to, to Peter and the rest of them to feed the lambs, the anointed. And then he said, feed my little sheep. My little sheep. He calls all the publishers that Jehovah's Witnesses, my little sheep. Shepherd my little sheep, he says. He doesn't say shepherd the lambs, does he? Because they don't shepherd the lambs. The elders don't shepherd the anointed. Of course, they don't understand that. They're not going that far. Now, that's my opinion. I can't teach that, but that's my opinion. In fact, my opinion is there can be no elders that are not anointed. All of them are just ministerial servants unless they're anointed. How many, dis uh, how many unanointed uh, Christians were in the first century? How many ministerial servants were there? One that we know of, and that was Timothy. When Timothy first began his ministry, he was not anointed. He has to prove himself first to be anointed. All anointed have to prove themselves first. Of course, Jehovah lets them know that they're anointed, and then they have to prove themselves for this final sealing. So there you have it, friends. These seven elders stand today disfellowshipped in the eyes of Jehovah. Now, they don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. But the Bible says that they are disfellowshipped. The scriptures. We broke it down. We made application. I illustrated it for you. 
explained it, I illustrated it, and we made application. Thanks for watching this video, and have a good day.